Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In this video, I'm going to talk about methane in the Arctic Ocean. I'm going to talk about some recent research, basically break down these scientific papers to easily understand understood concepts, hopefully, so that you can get a, an idea for some of the recent work that's being done um, on detecting methane in the Arctic, where it where it's coming from, where it's how much is staying in the water column, how much is going up into the atmosphere, and uh, the ramifications on the climate. So the Arctic Ocean um, is shown here, and you can see this is uh, 80 degrees north, this is uh, 70 degrees north, and this is the bathymetry, so the water in the deepest basin here, just uh, to the right of the Lomonosov Ridge is uh, about five kilometers deep. And then um, what is really noticeable is the shallow water all around the um, land region. So the continental shells, you know, the Barents Sea, Vast, Kara Sea, Laptev Sea, the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf in particular is very, very shallow. Most of the, this blue area is, is water that's 200 meters and shallower in depth or you can go right up here and see this region and the water is is uh, no deeper than about 50 meters or so and this is very significant because when you get methane released from the sea floor it bubbles up through the water column a lot of it can be absorbed in the water column and not go into the atmosphere but if the water is very shallow then most of it goes up into the the atmosphere so i'm mostly talking about a review paper um, actually, sorry, I'll go back here, go home and make it a bit bigger. Control plus, control plus. Okay, so, so this particular paper is the effects of climate change on methane emissions from seafloor sediments in the Arctic Ocean. It's a review paper. It was just published uh, very recently, May 17, 2016. So what does it say? Well, it starts off large quantities of methane are stored in the hydrates and permafrost within shallow marine sediments okay See, these reservoirs are highly sensitive to climate warming but the fate of methane released is uncertain does the methane stay in the water when it comes up does it go up into the atmosphere so this paper reviews physical bio and biogeochemical processes to, that regulate the amount of methane across the seabed in the water getting up to the atmosphere. It also talks about how in the atmosphere, methane lasts about 10 years. It's broken down by hydroxide, but in the water, you know, what breaks it down? In the sediments, what breaks it down? So it's broken down by oxidation in the water column, and that's aerobic oxidation and something called anaerobic oxidation, which sounds ridiculous because anaerobic means no oxygen, but this is a process that, it, where sulfur breaks down the methane. And this is in the, more in the sediments. So it also depends on the size of the bubbles coming up, depends on the amount of fresh water on the surface, which is put there by melting ice, but also by river inflow. And if it's warmer water, then it stays on the surface. Um, and this can inhibit the methane coming up. The sea ice can inhibit the methane coming up and so on. But we're losing sea ice, so there's higher winds, so there's more exchange of the water. Um, so the methane, you'd expect it to increase. Um, warmer water can't dissolve as much methane, so the methane is released when the water warms, and so you'd expect the methane to increase, and so on. So this study looks at, sort of as an overview of what's happening in all these areas. So, What, how, much is, how much methane is in the Arctic? Um, let's look at the marine sediments. Okay, the methane hydrate. So it's the frozen water surrounding methane. There's, it's estimated to be 30 to 9,000 gigatons. This is an enormous range. The, um, you know, it's an enormous range. If it's 30, then great. You know, if it's 9,000, not so good. 
You know, we have to narrow these numbers down. It's ridiculous that this range is so large. We know so little about it. Submerged permafrost, two to 1400 gigatons. You know, two according to the McGuire paper, 1400 just on the Eastern Siberian Arctic shelf alone, according to Shakova. You know, I believe the Russian numbers, they've been on the studying on that shelf for 30 years, so 1400. You know, terrestrial, the, the range is tighter, 1330 to 1580 gigatons of methane. So lots on the terrestrial permafrost. The atmospheric burden in 2011 was only 4.95 gigatons. Keep that in mind. So if only 10 gigatons was released from all these sources, that would double the CO, the, the methane in the atmosphere, and that would cause tremendous warming uh, very, very quickly. Um, a few years ago, uh, Peter Wadhams uh, wrote a paper uh, with an economist, and they, were, they calculated a $70 trillion hit to the global economies if 50 gigatons of methane came up over the space of a year or two or over 10 years. And uh, 50 gigatons, that's 10 times what there is in the atmosphere. And that's only a very small fraction of what is in the um, reservoirs up in the Arctic. So there's huge environmental changes in the Arctic. We know the sea ice is dropping exponentially. The snow cover is dropping exponentially. The temperature on land um, is much higher, so the, the rivers that flow into the Arctic Ocean are much warmer, and that fresh water floats on the surface and mixes with the colder water from the melt, which is fresh, so it changes the bathymetry, the distribution of water, the, 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 um, the, uh, the water is flowing in from the Pacific through the Bering Strait, increasing the temperature, and water, there's more water flowing from the Atlantic deep waters into the Arctic, which is raising the temperature. Um, so the, the whole Arctic is warming both above in the atmosphere and below in the, in the uh, water and water temperatures. There's our diagram. Um, people have, most people are familiar with the drop of sea ice area or extent. Um, you know, you could easily fit an exponential curve to this as well as, you know, there's a linear fit there. You know, we're rapidly losing sea ice. So what's happening with the methane? It's produced in the marine sediments um, by cracking of complex organic molecules. That's deep down, high temperatures and great depths in the, in the um, earth. So you, get geo, you, go, you go down, you get geothermal heat, and it, uh, it basically bakes the organic molecules, produces things like oil and coal and methane and so on. Or you can get it also by, this is abiotic, you can get it by biotic, microbial transformation of organic or inorganic carbon at shallower depths. So at low temperatures, less than about 10, and moderate pressures, three to five megapascals, that corresponds to depths, combined water and sediment depths of 300 to 500 meters. So this is where you have conditioned so that you get the methane hydrates or the clathrates, you get a solid. And there's a zone called the, 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 the uh, hydrate stability zone, so 400 to about 550 meters. This is where you have the hydrates formed, either, and they'll either sit on the surface of the, of the seafloor or they'll be in the sediments of the seafloor. So if you raise the temperature, then you go out of this stability zone and you can get the, the hydrates um, melting and then the methane that was trapped is released. The volume goes up 164 times and then you get a release of methane through the water column and uh, some will break the surface if the water is not too deep. Um, if the water is fairly deep, like off Svalbard, there were many plumes discovered and but these the water was deep enough that most of the methane was re, was removed um, in the water column didn't get up into the atmosphere there's lots of pingo like features on the seashell floor that are attributed to the hydrate decomposition you've probably heard about the 
the methane blowholes in Siberia. So this is uh, the same sort of phenomena. It's, it's caused by the methane hydrates. The pressure in that case blows the earth away, creating a big, a big sort of crater, a big hole. Um, there's uh, in the shallow water, like on the Eastern Siberian Arctic shelf, uh, we're getting the bubbling, we're getting the methane coming up. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's been, there's been elevated concentrations. There's been lots high dissolved methane concentrations in the water column and elevated methane concentrations in the atmosphere all the way up to about 1800 meters in height above the sea surface. In the Labtev Sea, the methane is oxidized by unfrozen sediment, so it's being broken down in the sediments of the seafloor, so there's not so much in the water column. So things vary across the Arctic, of course. That's no surprise. Um, so processes, there's many different physical processes that affect the methane distribution in the sediments. And um, so they transport through the sediments. How do they get through the sediments? Do they go through faults? Do they go, do they go through uh, porous uh, sediments um, through, you know, through pore waters moving? Um, do they follow a path around the grains, etc.? There's lots of, um, lots of work being done to try to figure out, you know, the rates that they, the, the methane can come out, the, the velocities. This, this shows some of the plumes as, as measured by sonar. So the, uh, this is the surface of the ocean up here. This is the bottom down here. You get these uh, lots of fish up here on the sonar and you get scatter from the gas bubbles and you can see these plumes coming up. And uh, you know, we can see in this case, the plumes are mostly vanishing before they get up to the surface. If the quantity of methane was to greatly increase, then they would come up and they, the water would be saturated. So a lot of the methane would get up into the atmosphere. So um, what, but there's also, um, there's also breakdown of the methane in the sediments there. So after reduction by photochemical processes in the troposphere. So this refers to the methane lifetime of 10 years and it's being broken down by the photochemical. You get sunlight coming in, breaking apart the water molecules, H2O, giving you an H and an OH minus. The OH minus is the scavenger in the atmosphere. It takes, it reacts, it's highly reactive. It reacts with methane, removing it. So after, after this process, microbial consumption is the largest sink. And this can be um, anaerobic, involving sulfur, not O2, or it, it can be aerobic. So I think there's a diagram here, yes. Yeah. So if you have basically methane coming up through the sediments, diffusing up through, then it will react with the sulfur in anaerobic. There's no oxygen down here. It'll react with the sulfur and be broken down, so, or it gets up into the water column and then it can react with oxygen and be oxidized in the water column. So those processes are going on. So slow seeps and things, the methane, there's processes that can remove the methane. I won't go into all of the technical details. Um, I'll just say that, um, you know, the bubble size is important. Small bubbles take a long time to rise and can dissolve out. Large bubbles uh, can transport up very, very high. And if there's an explosive, so this is an example, uh, very small bubbles, you know, none of them get to the surface, very large, uh, bu larger bubbles, five millimeter, this is the diameter of the bubble, five millimeter diameter will, will rise up. Some of them will get out through the surface at 90 meters. And if it's deeper down, it's all, it's all dissolved in the water column. Um, at small, these are for small quantities. It's very nonlinear. As you get higher quantities, then the processes change. Um, and then, so we can talk about how the Arctic is changing, um, the Arctic Ocean is changing, how the processes are changing everything, and, and so on. Uh, of course, with less sea ice, more methane can get out through, through the surface. So, it's very important that we find out exactly what's going on with methane. 
Um, we need to put a lot of resources into, into this to study it. Thank you.